Okay, we are back. <clears throat> We're here to talk about settings now. So we've talked about sort of an overview of GPAE, the automation engine. We've talked about getting a reference to the GPO. We've talked about containers. We've explored those things. Now we need to talk about settings. We actually touched on being able to find settings, um, but let's let's play with them a little bit more. And there's a bunch of different ways to crack this. So um, bear with me. This part is a bit of a stream of consciousness. So um, I will try to edit the video so that it's not too much fluff in here. But let's start at the top. We're looking natively, right? We have our container, which is the Windows settings container. Now, I may want to I eventually want to get to a container that has settings in it. So if we're looking at um, security settings, for example, and let's explore this from the command line. Um, I have my container one, and we talked about the ability to recurse, sorry, my recurse through um, the sub containers with this get gp container commandlet uh, script function essentially and if you notice there's some interesting data in here the name is interesting obviously but the gp the path the path to that container is actually uh, very interesting as well so if i want to look at just the gps path so that I can determine which path do I want to get to to get closer to the settings, right? Right now I'm I'm high up the tree, right? I'm computer configuration, Windows settings, that's it. But if I just want to look at the path, I'm sorting by the path to make it a little easier to read, but I can see a Windows settings, security settings, scripts, and under security settings, account policies and account lockout policies. And all of these things are going to have end nodes, right? So if I wanted user rights assignments, right? Imagine I want a container um, for user, uh, user rights assignments. I could go here and say cont1.get object. And now I have a slightly uh, deeper, I have to clean this up a little bit, um, path. And that deeper path is getting me closer to the setting. Sorry, I have ways to automatically uh, flip the bit to flip the side of these slashes, but for the sake of expediency, I'll do it manually. All right, so now I want to grab that container. Computer configuration. Oh, sorry. As you know, I'm already I'm already at computer configuration, so I only needed the end of it. So now when I look at this container for user rights assignments, there's a bunch of settings in there. You can see under the settings, I can actually do a count just like we've done in the past. Oh, that's capacity. I wanted count 44 different settings available in there. If I want to just look at those settings, of course, I can do some great stuff, sort by name, and then select name. I don't want to put too much data out there, right? And there's all these user rights assignments. These are important settings, right? These are the settings that essentially will be giving individual users or security groups rights to perform certain functions. So these are important. So now I have a container closer to the setting. And if I want to create a setting itself, I can do it this way. Let's say setting one equals uh, cont URA dot item dot settings dot item by name. And then I can grab anyone. Let's say allow log on locally. Allow log on locally, and as long as I'm typing correctly, I'll be able to get to that setting. So I, I'm in there. I actually know that um, get uh, 
Sorry, I had to pause. I had to create fix a typo. Um, I said log on one word. It's actually log on two words. It does lead me to this. If I am, uh, let me go back. If I'm looking at all of these settings themselves, when you actually go to grab a reference to the setting, the typing has to be perfect. And because there's no consistency in the teams across Microsoft delivered settings into GP, you can get into some picky things about uh, different spacing and capitalization and whatever. So be careful in here. The great opportunity for automation because you want to make sure that it's typed exactly the same way. So I grabbed that reference to allow logon locally. And now that setting itself is there. And it has the path and it has, you know, all kinds of information that's going to be helpful. But more importantly, it has some new methods to it. Uh, one is get property names. So I can see what properties are exposed with that specific setting. Another really important thing of the automation engine is the ability to parse through different types of settings and expose different properties based on those types. Um, <clears throat> not a trivial amount of work, I can tell you, but very interesting. All right, so hold on to that. I just did this settings dot item by name. Um, let me try a different one here. I'll say setting two equals con URA dot get object, just like I've done before. And let me find a different setting. Uh, change the system time. Let's use that one. Change the system time. And again, capitalization counts, so I probably messed that up, but we will find out soon enough. I didn't. I got it right. All right, so and uh, so change the system time. I have my path and whatever. So I can either do it, and to, to be perfectly honest, I always did it this way um, when I first started playing with the automation engine. <laughs> Uh, Darren Morelia, the founder of the company and the big brains around here, um, always does it this way, item by name. And the, the documentation typically is going to point to item by name. But either way you do it, if I say, let's see, setting one, let's see, get member, I have this setting, GP setting. Just a FYI, I can say setting one dot get type. And I get the same thing How about setting two dot get type. I get the same thing. OK, so whether I do item by name off of a container or get object off of a container, I'm going to be able to do the same thing. Now, lastly, is the get settings. And again, make sure you utilize the help system, get GP setting. This is another pretty easy one. Um, I can take the group policy object itself and pipe it into the uh, get GP settings just to show settings. Um, I can uh, create use get GP container with a path and then take that container and say group get GP setting. The nice thing here is it allows for wildcards. So I can find all of the GP settings in that container with the word prevent. Um, and here I'm getting a setting. I have this system contain that's a container and then prevent. So that now I'm down to an individual setting. So let's let's do this last method first. I'll do setting three uh, equals con sorry. Well, let's get GP setting. I'll do con one here because I haven't done all of that work to get to the sub container. And so now I'm back to where I need the actual name, right? So if I want to, I can say act as part of the operating system. Uh, 
That doesn't sound good. Part of the operating system. And there's setting three. Okay, so regardless, however I'm, I've created a reference to the setting, whether I use the script module and get GP settings, whether I use get item by name method, or whether I use get object method, I'm getting the same object type, and that object type is a setting, and that means there are different properties exposed here. So I can look at, show me all of the property names available for that specific type of setting. In this case, I just have a defined or value. So if I want to look at the actual value, I can say get value, and I can see that there's nothing in there. Is it defined? That's going to be false. Right, so we're going to be able to set those settings and make changes to those settings and, and monitor those settings and all kinds of stuff. So we'll do a part two on settings so that we can, um, you know, get more into writing settings instead of just reading them. But referencing the setting, making a connection to the setting, that's really the purpose of this. I've already gone way too long, so um, come on back.